We are live. Okay, can everyone hear me? If you're here in the classroom, give us a thumbs up or a heart or a message that you can hear us. We're maybe a couple of minutes early. Now it's four o'clock. I'm a lady who likes to be on time. People hear us? I'll do the waiting dance. Can you hear us on Instagram? Give us a Give us a something if you can hear us on Instagram. One person is watching. Okay. Uh, can they hear us? It says wave. I don't know. It says Laura Smith is watching. Laura, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Okay, so thank you, Instagram. Instagram can hear us. Face bag? Saying hi, but it's just not. Okay, so I'm going to keep talking. I'm going to walk over for just a moment. Thank you, Instagram. I'm coming back for you. We're going to be painting bunnies today, so get your, get your stuff together. Uh, yes, sound good. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so welcome to my first ever non-live live class. I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of classes in my life, and as first time we're doing it in 2D. Hope everyone's feeling well. Hope everyone's uh, hydrated and taking your vitamins and getting some exercise if you can. Uh, I am so grateful to the Southeast Duben County Library, the Corning Library, for helping to host this live event today. And thanks to the Arts Council of the Southern Finger Lakes for sharing it. And thanks to all of my buddies out there who have shared and are having watch parties. And is Ruth Ann in the house? Is anyone sitting with Ruth Ann? Ruth Ann always shows up to class first. So when we have our classes in Elmira, um, she's always the first one there. Ruth Ann in the house, I'd love to know. Um, okay, so what are we going to be working on today? We are going to be working on painting some bunnies, of course. I paint a lot of bunnies. Thought it would be a good springtime situation. And if uh, you associate bunnies and Easter, that's a fun thing too. Um, so what, I'm paint what I've painted on today are just stuff I have around the house. And what I had around the house, because I don't want to go out shopping right now, is I had these shims that people who do woodworking and put in door frames, I guess, um, they use these. So I got this huge bundle of them at either Home Depot or Lowe's, one of those, a huge bundle of them for less than $20. I mean, so many that... Um, I could give them out on the street and still have a lot left over. So I think they're great. Are they, um, what's the word uh, they, people use for when things never uh, deteriorate? What's that word? Anyone got that word? Bunsy, do you have that word? Are they uh, acid free? I don't know. Are any of us acid free? But they're around and I'm gonna paint on them. And do we want to think about the longevity of our art? Of course we do. But between you and me and Bunsy, I don't know that this is going to end up in the Whitney. Maybe it will. Um, but there have been wackier things in the Whitney. So don't worry about it. Just use what you have around. Uh, maybe you have around um, some cardboard. Like I had these cardboards from like a t-shirt that I bought. They came and... I couldn't throw it away. My friend Mick has sent me cardboards from her cat food containers, like in between the cans. Those are great. So just use what you have around, okay? So we're gonna be, I'm gonna be painting on wood. I'm also gonna be demonstrating larger here. I realize this is sort of a petite thing to see uh, just in a camera. So I'm gonna actually be painting larger too on my easel. Um, so we've got wood. We've got some painting supplies, such as gesso. 
Now, if you're painting with me right now and you feel like you can go a step ahead, put gesso, one thin coat of gesso on your substrate, on your wood or whatever. But if you're just watching me today and taking notes, um, the first step is going to be putting on some gesso and I'll get back to that. So we've got um, wood, we've got acrylic gesso, we've got acrylic paints, um, a pencil, Throw away your eraser, you don't need it. Um, we have water, and I like to use two containers for water. I like to use something that's sort of like my dirty water, like that maybe more paint will get into. And then I use something else that is my clean water. And I got this at the dollar store. Don't go to the dollar store right now wait a while but I got this at the dollar store and I like it because it has this uh, where you put your thumb it fits uh, paint brushes pretty well so you want like two containers of water so here's your first artist tip are you ready are you ready are you ready the first artist tip if your water is dirty and you've noticed that your paints are getting muddy when you put them on your canvas your paper whatever it's because you've got muddy water so the cleaner you can keep your water the better and keep changing it out so for those of you who've been in my classes before uh, I always give you another supply which is uh, some paper towel and can anyone shout out what kind of paper towel it is anyone anyone Bunzi do you know Viva, that's right, excellent, well done. So Viva towels, why do I use Viva towels? Well, one, because one of my painting mentors taught me about them. Thank you, Robert Burich. Um, Viva towels, so they're not inexpensive. They are, I don't know how eco-friendly they are, but you don't need to use very many of them. You will be able to use this one towel over and over and over again. You'll be able to make other things with the towel once it gets dirty. Um, everyone has heard this joke before who's been in my class, but I'm gonna tell you again. So I'll often be doing street festivals, painting live, and somebody will say, oh my gosh, can I have one of your paper towels, one of the used, colorful, beautiful paper towels? And I'll say, yes, of course, you get a free paper towel with every painting you purchase. Ha ha ha. Okay, so we want Viva towels uh, or anything you have. You know, don't use your toilet paper. Ha ha ha. But even an old towel that you wash is great. Um, but the reason I like uh, to have a paper towel as part of my kit is because we're using acrylic paints. And acrylic paints are basically plastic um, with pigments um, suspended in the plastic, right? So it's great that it's plastic, it, it's, um, it's fume-free, it's basically toxic-free if you're not using any of the cadmium colors, um, and uh, it's easy to clean up, but it's plastic, so I don't want that going down into our water systems, right? Right, so um, paper towel is part of our kit. So what happens is we're painting, 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 painting. We're done with this color. We're ready to wash this brush. But what I want you to do first is go to your Viva towel and get off as much paint as you can. I made a mistake there. Does anyone know what the mistake was? Anyone? Bunzi, do you remember? The, before you even hit your paper towel, I want you to wipe this off on some other substrate. So something that you're gonna be painting later. So you see how this is just a weird mash of colors? You see this? So the reason this is a weird mash of colors is because I was using this to wipe my brush off. So painting, painting, painting. Um, then you wipe off your brush onto something else. And then you go please to your Viva towel or whatever it is. You can even go to your, um, if you just wanna wipe onto your pants or you know your, uh, apron whatever but go to your Viva towel and then go to the water I know I'm spending a lot of time on this but it's important because I don't want the plastic going down into the sewers and into your septic tanks and all of that okay so um, what kind of paints we're using acrylic and I, I said you know those are basically plastic well what brands do I like 
I like whatever I can get my hands on. With the exception of I have one color in one brand that when I put a top coat over it, when I put gloss over it, it smears. So, <sighs> oh, you, know, you just have to roll with it. Our ceramicists, our glass blowers know things don't always work out, right? You just gotta roll with it. So the brands that I'm gonna be using today are, and if I'm going off camera, I'm just going to some of my supplies. Um, so I like Liquitex Basics. I like this better than their more professional line. It's, it's viscosity is beautiful. It's like butter, I love it. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of golden paint specifically this Payne's gray like if I had to like um, pick one paint to be on a deserted island it would be this Payne's gray by golden it turns into this beautiful inky blue and depending on how you water it down or add an extender oh it almost looks black it's not black and I use it in place of black very often um, but then I've also got like cheapo Depot stuff. Like this was like 75 cents and I liked it because it's got a duochrome. I don't even know where I got these little ones. A yard sale maybe? Use the paint you've got at hand. Is it nail polish? Go outside and do it because that stuff is stinky. But if you're gonna paint with nail polish, paint with nail polish. Um, so uh, I talked about gesso. So this golden paint here, which does this blue that I love so much, we're gonna be using, I'm gonna be using golden gesso. Um, if you don't have gesso, just use white paint. So just grab any brush right now. I know I didn't talk about brushes yet, it's okay. Uh, grab whatever brush you have and grab whatever substrate you have, okay? If it's wood, cardboard, I don't care. And I'd like you to put a thin coat of white acrylic gesso or acrylic paint a thin coat we need this to dry okay um, I specifically like golden gesso because it's made in here in New York State it's very close you can take tours oh my god I totally want to take a tour has anyone taken a golden tour and um, part of my work ethic is to not use uh, um, supplies that have animal products in it so a lot of gesso has gelatin and what is gelatin it's basically hooves um, and I don't want hooves in my artwork some of this paper still has hooves in it and I'm trying my best to not use any of that but this gesso is hoof free so for me that's important if it's not important to you go on with your life so what is gesso gesso looks like white paint it's a little bit thinner it dries a little bit harder or a lot harder and you can sand it if you want so if you had something really porous like this wood is wicked porous right um, putting a layer of gesso on will allow you to then put other layers of paint and the paint will just what well, won't seep into the substrate a substrate is a new word for you substrate means the thing you're painting on a canvas is a substrate a wall is a substrate your eyeliner your eyelid is the substrate okay um, so I have already gone and done that. I have put gesso on a new board. And Bunsy, everyone seeing that fine? Thank you. Um, so I've got gesso on this. Um, it looks like white paint, if that's what you're using. Um, I've got this on this one as well. Now, can you see these three different? Okay. so. One of these here, this yellow, I put here because I wanted you to see that it's transparent, um, translucent. You can see through it. This middle one is that Payne's gray that I love. It may look black. And I'm doing my best with lighting. We're going to get better lighting situations happening when we can go into the world and get ring lights and all that fancy stuff. And then I've got this lavender here. So, Bunsy, is, is that showing up? Okay, so you see these three? They have, you can see through the yellow. You can see through, oh, a dog is walking through. <laughs> we have a dog in the studio. Do you have studio pets? Do they do wacky things like knock your camera over? Um, and so what else I want you to see is this side here has one layer. See the bottom has one layer of gesso and the top has two layers of gesso. So you can see the wood grain a little bit more. Um, 
The dog literally has a thousand square feet to hang out in the studio and she's right here under the camera. Adopt, don't shop people. Okay, so what I'm getting at is you can add more than one layer of gesso and it's real. you're gonna, um, it's also gonna allow your paint colors to really pop, pop. All right, any questions? Am I going too fast? If I'm going too slow, I'm sorry. Um, we're all good? Dulcie, Dulcie dog is moving stuff around. We're all good. Okay, so, um, so another thing that um, you will eventually want to use is something to hang your art piece on with. Hang your art piece with. So somewhere. So these, um, if you're using these, I keep calling them shivs in my head, but that's not it. Shims, shims. <laughs> it's a different thing. <laughs> Bunsy does not approve. So um, I've got these sawtooth, can you see that? These sawtooth hangers in here. Did we lose something? We, it, we push uh, these right into the wood. So these shims have a thin side and a thick side. So however you think you're gonna end up hanging your art piece. So if you're hanging it thus, thusly, Make sure that this top is where is the thicker part of the shiv. Shim. <laughs> um, if you put it in the thin side, you'll see I kind of messed up this one because I tried to put it in the thin side and it did not work and it went right through. And uh, I've got a sample, a couple samples here. So some of them you have to put, can you see that? Some of them you have to put nails in, but I like these ones with the teeth in it. So for my Instagram folks here, okay. Um, you can buy them at your local Lowe's and value place. Um, they come like six for a few bucks. Um, or you can go on the internet service and find, I buy them in bulk because I'm an artist and a painter and I use a lot of them. Okay, so what I was getting at is um, decide now what is your top and what is your bottom or if you're going to do a horizontal piece, which um, you're welcome to do that, okay? So I'm gonna get a, glass, uh, a sip of water and talk amongst yourselves. Always put your drinking water far away, far away, from your painting water. Thank you. Otherwise, you get to dump out your drinking water and start all over. Um, the next thing that we're gonna have are brushes. So you um, maybe you have some plastic glo rubber gloves and you wanna use your fingers, that's great. Maybe you have some cotton swabs or Q-tips, that's great, cotton balls. Maybe you have a rag and you wanna start painting with that. But some of my favorite brushes are, where's my favorite, favorite brush? Aha, Mwah. I love this brush. So you see the shape of that? Um, it's a big honking brush. I got it in Italy from a hardware store and I think it was meant for like greasing mechanical things. I don't think it's a paintbrush, but I love it. It's my favorite. These are like three for a dollar. It's a paintbrush. These you can fill with water. So if you're a watercolorist or you use ink, those are great. Um, this is a brush that you can get very far away from your thing because it's so long. I don't prefer the this specific one because it's quite heavy. So when you're shopping for brushes, just get what you can afford and what's around. But if you're shopping for brushes, seriously, hold it for a little while in the store and what and you know wind it around like Harry Potter would because if you don't like the weight in a couple of moments, you're not going to like it hours into your painting. These little brushes I got at Target or Target. Um, this is an old but clean toothbrush, super useful. So what I'm getting at is use what you've got, right? What do we have here? We have a, a foam brush. I don't love these because of the, you know, you gotta clean this out really well if you wanna use it again, but it's, it's foam and I'm trying to not use foam. This is a stenciling brush, right? I've actually used blush brushes as well. Um, use what you have at hand. Um, 
Okay, any questions? On Insta Instagram, I can't see your questions right now, but if you, if anyone has a question you want to send me later, go to philomenajackstudio.com, philomena with an F like flower, and send me your questions and I'll answer them as, uh, as well as I can after the class. All right, so again, the dog is moving the camera. Uh, so I'm going to start on, um, I'm going to start on a, one of these wood panels. Uh, so we're going to bring the camera in closer over here on, for the people on Facebook. Uh, we're coming closer, coming closer. Um, if you are left-handed, your major supplies, your paper, I'm sorry, your water, your paints, your palette should be on your left side. If you're right-handed, please do the opposite. My hope is that you're going to be painting for a really long time in your life. And I don't want you to throw your back out because you've been twisting all day. Um, okay, agreed. So put your stuff on your left side if you're left-handed and so on. Or some, if you're painting, I often paint flat on a table uh, as opposed to on an easel like this. And I'll put my stuff in, in, uh, at the top of my project. So that's something you can do too. So I've got my uh, piece here. Um, I've got an, an additional one over to the side because I, like I said, um, b before my paintbrush, dirty paintbrush hits water, I let it hit um, something else I'm going to paint. Um, and again, so what do I mean by that? So can you see that? Is that coming up all right? Uh, so uh, this, the background of this painting was what I call a garbage painting to start with. So it was what I was wiping my paintbrush off before it hit the towel and then water. So have something that you can wipe off your brush on. Bunsies, bunsies. All right, we're ready to paint some rabbits. So I'm gonna start with a pencil um, or a marker. I'm gonna use a marker so that y'all can really see it. Um, so if you wanna practice before you start on your substrate, just practice on, with a pencil. We're just making basic shapes here. I often hear people say in class um, that they can't even draw a stick figure. And my answer is, so what? We're not painting stick figures, we're painting other things. If it's a, a pineapple or a rabbit or a cupcake, right? So don't worry about it. And true, true story, so I have a, that fancy BFA degree, Bachelor of Fine Arts, and I was literally the worst drawer in my class. But I still got my degree because I was dedicated and I could write papers and I could do all these other things. So who cares if you think you can't draw? Maybe you can't draw because you're not practicing. And maybe you're not practicing because you think you can't draw. So I'd like you to contemplate that in the grand scheme of the world. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. So. Um, the shapes, let me bring up our, can everybody see that? Um, so our shapes here um, are, um, can you see all the way to the top here? How, yeah, you can see all the way to the top. Okay, so I always start with ears <laughs> because you're supposed to nibble on the ears first, right? Um, so my character, Bunzi, who has just come from the other side of the camera just to visit with you. so. Thanks, Bunzi, for hopping over. Um, I always start with the ears. So, um, this bunny here in our sample has quite tall ears. So, if you think about um, a long oval and another long oval, bazinga! You've just drawn yourself some bunny ears. And it's got a little forehead that goes between the ears, so that's one little line. And it's got a round head, right? I'm sorry for those on Instagram that aren't seeing it quite right. You can imagine what I'm doing. Um, okay, and then its body is a uh, close parentheses and open parentheses. Teach your all kids about what a parenthesis is, please. Um, and you, you can't see his feet in the, in, because he's in the grass in our sample, but Bunzi's feet here, right? Um, I sometimes think about it as a, a figure eight, right? 
Am I making perfect lines? Who's to say what's perfect? Um, the fact that you're making something is more important than uh, what you're telling yourself about your drawing skills. Just keep drawing. Okay, so that is the basic shape here. Um, and I'm gonna slap some paint on this. Uh, did you know that there are other classes coming up? Um, our friend Kimberly, whose last name I'm not pronouncing correctly, Kimberly DeRider Canali, uh, she has a, a class coming up too on this same platform, not on Instagram, on uh, through the uh, Elmira, I'm sorry, through the uh, Corning Library, the Southeast Duban County Library. So um, I'm going to just do the same thing I did with uh, our sample here. I'm going to go with a lavender bunny. Um, did I paint the background first? No, I did not. And we'll talk about why that is. So on my thing that is not the thing is the uh, scrap piece. Um, and actually, I'm going to do it on this one because it has gesso on it. I'm putting out some paint. OK, so I've got some paint uh, more than I need. It's out with acrylic paint. You'll see it often comes out more than you need. All right, so I've got some paint and I'm not um, drawing. You see, I'm not even going to draw a shape here. Uh, I'm just going to go for it. And again, just check yourself first. Make sure if you're using the shims that you're you, you, the, the top is the thicker part so that you can get a hanger in there. Um, and I actually think my sample's a little short. I'm going to make them a little taller today. And this is a little wonky. I'm not standing in a position that feels really comfortable for me right now because uh, I'm trying to, my best to make sure everyone at home can see. And again, Instagram. Thanks for hanging in there. Uh, all right. There are two ovals. Are they the last uh, time I'm going to hit the ears with paint? No. But I'm just getting a basic shape in there. We're just going to keep uh, building this bunny. Build a bunny. Oh, I guess that's already a thing. I guess I can't trademark that. Um, okay. So then the head, uh, there's this forehead or her. I don't know. I haven't met her yet, so we'll see. Um, and ending up like a circle. Because these are so lightweight, a clamp would be really helpful if I had thought about that. But again, I normally paint flat, but I couldn't figure out a way to get y'all to be able to see what I was doing if I was painting flat. So, okay, so there, uh, and then the, my parentheses. Oh, this is gonna be a skinny bunny. We're gonna have a, a thin bunny. Uh, and, I, and you really can't see the feet on this sample here, so I'm not going to worry about it. Can you believe we've been here for a half an hour already? We only have an hour left, people. Oh my gosh. Okay. So um, two lines, a circle, and uh, parentheses. Um, now is a good time to decide what the light side and the dark side is. I like drama. If you uh, study some Caravaggio paintings, I'm not equating this with Caravaggio, but if you study Caravaggio, that lighting that that man got, woo, it's like the first movie lighting. It makes me so excited. So on our sample here, I've got a light side and a dark side. So I'm going to, I'm going to reverse it this time. I'm going to decide that the left side of this bunny is darker than the right side. So... If you've taken, again, if you've taken classes with me before, you'll recognize I like to think about our layers as LOL, lots of layers. And a couple of you love lots of love. Yes. Um, so lots of layers. So we do dark, lights, darks, lights. We, we push and pull back and forth. Um, so there. All right. I'm going to kind of keep it at that. All right. That was enough. Notice I only put one color of paint out to begin with. Um, I'm going to go grab some white paint now. And again, I like this basics a lot and I buy the white in larger quantities because I use more white. Um, boop. Sound effects always helpful. All right. Um, I'm not even going to wash my brush off. I'm going to kind of get some of the excess off. I'm going to get some of the excess off on, uh, this other substrate and then I'm going to dip right into my white 
and really start to go to town on where this light side is. And if this gesso wasn't dry, right, um, I'd have a benefit in that uh, I, that would mix in with the paint a little bit, which would be cool. Um, people complain that acrylic paints dry too quickly. Um, and I say you just haven't met the right medium or medii to get your paints to have a longer open time. So, okay, so I'm adding some light here. I'm going to do the same with the ears. I'm going to, on this left side, and especially the top, I've added some lights. Excellent. I like when it mixes in with the wet purple. That's cool. So now if I've got a light side, I need a dark side, right? Go to the dark side. Okay, who it is? I'm looking down at my um, my paint supplies. I may grab something that isn't purple, but is darker in relative to this lavender. So maybe I'm gonna pick like this kind of weird blue. Um, and I may be off camera for a moment just as I put some of this out. How's it going on Instagram? Thanks for hanging out. What a nice group. Kimberly, I can see that you've sent me a message, but I can't read it. Um, okay, so I've put out this, this darker blue on my palette. Um, is it the darkest color? I will use no, because I want to uh, definitely use that Payne's Gray I was talking about. So now I'm gonna hit this side of the bunny with, look, I've used one brush so far. I haven't even cleaned it yet. How about that? I know some people that would freak them out, like oh, a dirty brush. Say it isn't so. Um, okay, so the, I feel like it's important to get the shadowing of the bunny's chin so that it doesn't look like just a blob, right? I mean, we're doing folk art here, but we also can use some real fine art um, techniques here. So we're gonna just add and in my sample if you see up there i can you see the top of the sample uh the sample i've got some clouds going by and in my eye mind they were um carrot shaped clouds that the bunny was thinking of so since i have this on my brush um i'm gonna start putting some clouds in and maybe i'll just make these fluffy clouds so i've got a a, a rainbow shape and then maybe another a smaller rainbow shape, and then maybe kind of a circle-y shape. It's a cloud, right? It doesn't have to, like all clouds are perfect. Make it whatever shape. So because I already had that color on my brush, uh, and I'm just dab, 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 dab. I'm not, I don't have a death grip on my brush. So I also teach crochet classes, and I can tell the people who've had too much caffeine because their yarn and their crochet hook are squeaking. So if your knuckles are white right now, drop your shoulders, take a breath, have a sip of water, and relax a little. Um, you don't need a death grip on your paintbrush here. Okay, here's an art tip. So I read somewhere or was taught this in art school that most people only look at paintings for three seconds. Why? I don't know for sure, but there's a lot of art in the world, thank goodness, and there's still gonna be a lot of art, even more when we're done today, right? Um, but people will look at your art piece for three seconds, your painting, and then move on, okay? So what I'd like you to do to get like two more seconds of eyeball time, and this may be the time that it takes for somebody to go from, huh, painting to, ah, oh, I wanna buy that painting, is I want you to use your colors all over your canvas or your substrate or whatever it is, okay? So what I mean by that, I use this dark blue down in the bunny, I'm gonna use it up in the clouds. What that does is our eyes, we like to see patterns and connections, so we'll keep moving around this piece for a couple more seconds, our eyes will just naturally try to find another blue somewhere, okay? So whenever you're using a color, use it in more than one place, okay? Promise? Promise? Awesome, okay. So, all right, so I've got my cloud started there. Uh, I'm gonna add some of the lavender into the cloud. Boop, boop, boop. Sound effects are helpful. A little bit of white on that cloud. And you may be saying, Hey, how can it be that cloudy and he still have sunshine and highlights on his ears and stuff? Because it's imaginary, that's why. Art is freedom, folks. Art is freedom. You're free to make up these characters as you wish.
All right, cool. Now I am going to put in the background color. Why didn't I do it first? Good question. I once took a painting class with my husband and the teacher had us not put the background color in because they forgot, <clears throat> this is not that. We are not putting our, we didn't put our background color in is because I want us to get sort of a glow around the rabbit. And I can kind of show you here in this sample, do you see the pink that is around? Can you see that? The pink that is around the pig? That little bit of pink allows the pig to pop even more than if the, this tealy green went all the way around. We're gonna do a technique we call negative shape painting. So if you've taken my pineapple class, this is how we got to pineapple shape, negative shape painting. So basically you're painting what isn't there. So if you're trying to imagine this again, think about a vase on a table. When you're looking at the vase, the vase is the positive shape. Everything around that vase is the negative shape, okay? When I learned this in art school, mind blown. You can see air, you can see space, amazing. Okay, so we're gonna paint the negative shape around this rabbit, okay? Um, I, now, now I'm gonna have to think about my brush a little bit. So I'm gonna wipe off on here. This is gonna become some other painting sometime in my life. Um, so I've wiped off on my uh, other canvas. I'm now using my paper towel and that is pretty darn clean. I'm gonna put a little bit of water, boop. Notice that's the first time I've touched water. Okay, acrylic painting brushes like to be a little damp before they hit acrylic paint. I forgot, no big deal, just keep rolling. Um, all right, so I've got most of this paint out of here. And you know what, I actually should go to a, I think I'm gonna go to a slightly larger brush because I've got more uh, space to paint. Should I go to the favorite brush? Is that too big? <gasps> I'm gonna go to my favorite brush. I'm gonna go for it. Can everyone see this brush? Okay, why do you think I picked yellow as my background for this one? Can anyone online? Tell me, why did I pick yellow to go around the purple bunny? Color theory, it's only a theory. So um, if, we're, if we're gonna say that the primaries today are red, yellow, and blue, uh, complementary colors are colors that sit on the opposite side of the color wheel. So today we're saying that yellow and purple are complementary. Um, if you're asking why I'm saying that there's more than one type of uh, primary color, because there is, go look it up, it's really fascinating. So I picked yellow because I knew it would really make this purple bunny pop. And because I've got yellow here, I'm just gonna do it again. It worked once, um, I'm gonna do it again. Oh, here's a, another pro tip. Ready, are you ready? So work on multiple things at a time. So I've got all of this paint left on my palette and it's gonna be, I'm not gonna use all of that paint today. So I have different substrates hanging around and I'm using the same color family because it's there on my palette. And so because these are so small, I can work in a series pretty quickly. Um, it's another pro tip. How about that? Everyone enjoying class? Is it worth the price of admission, which is your data? <laughs> can she get yellow to come out? Hold please. Well, I get the yellow to come out. All right. There we go. Everyone hear that? Do you have do you have seven year olds in your house giggling right now? Anyone? Anyone? Okay. So I am gonna I'm gonna make my brush a little bit damp because again acrylic brushes and paint I'm wipe a little bit off on my um, on my apron and I am just loosely dab dab dab. You can do this without looking. Don't do it while you're driving, but you can do this pretty easily. I'm going to put my palette down, move my other things. Um, can everyone see what I, what's happening here? Bunsy everything's cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you, Bunsy. 
And I'm not going perfectly all the way around this uh, rabbit character I've created. I'm leaving a little bit of that white space. So like in the, in the piggy painting, so in the piggy painting, so I started off with a white and then I went to pink and then I went to green. Um, you can do this multiple times. So you can have multiple layers. And those, for my scrapbookers out there and for people who are uh, using gel plates to make mono prints, it's the same idea. You can keep adding layers. There's my LOL, lots of layers. Make it interesting. Make it so that when somebody walks up, like if you really look at all of the layers here, right? The dark and the light and the middle tones, that's so much more interesting than one flat color. So, and again, I normally would paint, be painting um, flat, so feeling a little, little awkward here, but we're gonna get through. All right, so the yellow is in my background, and I'm gonna touch the bunny with a little yellow too, because what did I say? Keep moving the paint color around. So I'm gonna put a little yellow on that light side, and we're gonna come back to it. Again, thank you to the Southeast Duban County Library for helping me to produce this, this class. Right now, um, I, like most, many, many people, um, my gigs have dried up and I depend on my gigs in order to pay my mortgage and feed my dog and put gas in the car so I can get to more gigs, right? Uh, um, so by producing this, oh, and you can paint on the sides too, like, uh, I had extra paint on my brush, so I'm just rubbing that on. So uh, by the library um, producing classes with local artists and community members, um, you're helping out a lot. It's not a little right now, you're helping out a lot. So really, my, uh, me and my family, we are so grateful to have this class and I thrive when I have projects like this. I love teaching. I love teaching. I have taught so many different things in my life. Um, some of you may know I'm also a personal development coach or a life coach. And um, I get my greatest joy when I'm helping someone get from A to B. And so where are we getting today? We're getting from not knowing or not remembering how to make a beautiful rabbit painting to making something fun and exciting um, and just lovely. Okay, so got that yellow going on and it, I'm going to let it dry down a little. Uh, I've wiped my brush off on my palette. Um, I'm wiping it off onto my Viva towel. You can already see it's looking beautiful. So these make really cool bookmarks. Once this is dry, you could sew with this thing. You can put it in your, in your journals. Um, I have uh, uh, laminated these and made them into ornaments. They're just lovely once you get all that paint on there. Okay, so back to our bunny friend. Um, I think I'm gonna, I, again, I'm gonna put them in a field of flowers and I'm just gonna grab some, this is Artist Loft uh, and it is level one. Level one means it's the cheapo depot stuff. It's the, you're not taking yourself too seriously stuff and it's just fine, it's just fine. Um, my favorite, favorite brand is Holbein. Hello, Holbein, if you're looking for someone to sponsor, come on, come on over. I'd love you to sponsor me, Holbein. Um, but Holbein's my favorite, and then after that, I really, really like Golden. Again, they're a local company, um, and they have great educational um, um, classes that you can take online. Okay, so I've put out some green. I'm gonna stick with my big honkin' brush. It still has some yellow in it, and that's fine because that's gonna mix in quite nicely. And can y'all see? Bunsy, can you see? It just, because this is so lightweight, I'm having trouble keeping it on the canvas. So look, I'm doing this upside down, backwards, in front of a number of people, it's just gonna be fine, all right? So you sitting at your house or wherever you're sitting in your tree house, um, you're gonna be fine. So dab, 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 dab. What would Bob Ross say? He'd say there's a happy little field of flowers. And I'm gonna put a little green up into the rabbit too. Um, 
just to show that he's or she is just sort of sitting in those flowers. And what did I say about moving your colors around? So I've got this green down there. So I'm just going to not even look. I'm just going to, Bunzi, can you see what I'm doing? Uh, I'm just going to hit a little green in that cloud because maybe the grass is reflecting off the cloud. It's in our imagination, but again, it's going to allow the eye to move around this painting so that um, you get a couple more seconds of eyeballs time. Isn't it cute? It's already so stinking cute. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm, now I'm going to bring out the, um, I'm going to bring out my small brush again, and we're going to put in some details like the, the little bunny arms. <laughs> um, you can put them out to the side. You could have them doing the Watusi. Um, but uh, it's important to make them look like bunny uh, arms and not something else that might be hanging mid chest. If you understand what I'm saying, okay? The adults in the room. Um, so let's make sure we get them to look like bunny feet. So, okay, so in, uh, in our sample here, let's see, I've used some shading to really make it look like uh, they're standing above the belly area. So I'm going to take some of that, um, our initial middle lavender, and am I going to think about it too much? No, I'm not. I'm going to do two uh, U shapes. Okay, just give myself an, uh, something to think about. And then I'm going to go in with my dark and on the dark side, give it a little paint. And notice I didn't just clean off my brush. I want these colors to kind of mix. And I'm actually going to add a little more of that dark side right under his chin. Uh, I'm going to go back and Maybe add some at the base of the ears. Again, it's just lots of layers, okay? Acrylic paints kind of fold back into themselves. Uh, oil paints really sit on top of one another. But I'm using some, these acrylic paints. I don't have any medium in them that would allow them to kind of stand out from one another. They're, they, I have various brands here, so maybe they're not talking great to each other. So what that means is I need to use a lot of layers. Um, and I like that. Again, that's more, way more interesting to me than one and done. Um, I'm going into my white now and the, because I decided that's the light side, I'm adding what will be the light side to the, to the, uh, the paws. Um, and I'm going to add a little bit more into the belly area. I've got a little light in there. All right. Oh my gosh. Already so cute. Already so cute. Okay. And here's another thing. You don't have to finish this in one sitting, okay? I'm gonna get this wrapped up in one sitting for y'all, but honestly, I might walk around the studio tomorrow and hit it with something. Just see it from di different uh, perspectives. Here's artist tip number three or seven. I can't tell where we're at right now, but stand away from your art piece. So every once in a while, stand away and get close. And stand away and get close so that you have different perspective. You want this to read really well from across the room as well as up close, okay? Um, all right, so looking good, looking good. Um, I'm going for my favorite now. We're gonna, I'm gonna add some of this Payne's Gray to my palette. Okay, just a little bit is all you need. Um, let's see. I am gonna wipe off my brush a little. I'm not gonna clean it, I'm just wiping it off a little. And now taking just a little bit of this Payne's Gray, uh, I am gonna really add some definition here. I like my things to look cartoony. Bunsy, am I showing up okay? Um, I really like there to be definition. I sometimes actually take a, a marker with this color, a paint marker, with this color, or sometimes I will use black, and I will actually outline my things. I love comic books, and I love graphic novels, and I like that look a lot. I'm so glad there are realist painters out there doing amazing realist paintings of marbles and apples and stuff. Good for them. That's not what I want to make. I'll, I'll love to look at that and 
and uh, I will applaud those artists, but that's not my bag. Good for them. Um, so now this, uh, you can, I hope you can see this Payne's gray is just really giving some beautiful definition to this bunny and I'm going to add it to the clouds. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. Um, here's how you make bunny paws look like bunny paws and not something else that may be hanging from a chest is to give it toes. So just a couple of lines. Again, people, I'm doing this upside down and backwards, right? You can do this. So just a couple of lines there. Okay. Um, and since I'm here, I'm ready to do an eyeball. I'm going to do an eyeball. This is a good place for a uh, Q-tip if you have it, a cotton swab. Um, I'm going to use sort of this small brush here. You see that? I'm going to use this small brush. So um, we're going to use the twist and flick. Hermione would be so proud. So can you see what I'm doing? Come closer. Can you see? Okay, so uh, first I'm gonna make it damp a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna dip in and I'm gonna twirl and lift. Twirl and lift. That's gonna make sure that this uh, very narrow brush keeps its point, otherwise it could get all smushy. You know when you're putting on your eyeliner and it's not quite sharp enough and you get a smokier eye than you thought? <laughs> Um, we're trying to avoid that. Did I lose it? Did I drop our piece? Ah, <laughs> okay, here we are. Don't get splinters. These are splintery. Um, okay, so again, I'm going to do it upside down. I'm going to choose where these eyeballs are going to go. Okay, so we're going to put one right about here. And you can always go over this. If this is the wrong place for an eyeball, We'll just paint over it. Ain't no thing. Dulcie Dog is again trying to be helpful. She's trying to knock over all the supplies. Thank you, Dulcie. So we got our Dulcie Dog um, from a wonderful foster named Kate Murphy. She was working with, I think, Blue Moon Meadow Rescue. Dulcie came from Ohio, from as I as I understand it, a high kill shelter. Um, when we got her, she was less than two, uh, and she's practically perfect. You know, she knew to pee outside. She knew not to, uh, not to be aggressive. She, she knew how to walk on a leash. She, use dogs, man. They're the best. It's like having all of your favorite apps downloaded on your new phone. So thank you to Kate. And while I'm talking about it, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do a nose, which is a triangle. So Kate is one of my Patreon supporters. Thank you, Kate. So I've got Kate and Nikita and Barbie and Sister Lisi uh, and Fifi. Um, is that five? That was five? Thank you so much. So if you don't know what Patreon is, Patreon is a way to support creative folks that you dig. So you can join at different levels uh, in every month. You know, some people send me $2, some people send me a lot more. Uh, and at different levels, you get different benefits. So people who, uh, anyone who participates gets shout outs to whatever project they're working on and they get special behind the scenes um, projects. Uh, so right now, I'm minutes away from having a Bunsy coloring book uh, come out to the world. And all of my Patreon supporters, they're getting that Bunsy book for free that they can download on their own and play with. How cool is that? So again, I am so grateful. Those Patreon supporters, um, they pay for my, they make it possible that I can pay for my website and that I can get my taxes done the right way and a hundred other things. So, okay, so we've got a cute little smile. Again, I did it upside down backwards while I was talking to you about something else. You can do this. Um, I like there to be whiskers because um, I have been a bunny mama 
And I know those bunnies have the cutest whiskers. So I also like the number six. So I'm going to do three on each side. One, two, three. One, two, three. And this one didn't kind of. There you go. Super cute. Super cute. Um, let's see. I'm going to give it a little of this dark color. That's what I dropped. I dropped my brush. That's okay. I'm going to get a different brush. Like I don't have more brushes. Okay. I'm going to use a little bit of this dark color down at the bottom bunsy. Can you see, am I doing this? On, um, just to anchor him, give him a shadow. Oh my God, it's so cute. Cute, cute, cute. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take a little of this medium blue, that medium color that we had. Um, and I'm just going to make a little bit of a shadow where his paws would create a shadow on his belly. And I'm going to add a little more shadow to more under his chin. Then I'm going to, then it's just back and forth, lots of layers. I'm going to, super cute. So what we're missing right now are some pink. I like pink in the ears. I like a little bit of pink in the nose. And this is going to take so little paint. I don't even think I have to pour it out. Um, this is Master's Touch. Again, a kind of a cheapo depot acrylico. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to open that up. Oh, okay. So these, uh, these paint boogers that come out, um, I save these. No, it sounds crazy. I'm not a hoarder. I save these. I have them in a jar and then I add them to other paintings to give it texture. It's really cool. Um, my my girl Shanna was helping me pack up my studio. So this Elmira studio is new to us. We were in Hornell for about three years and uh, she was helping me pack up the studio. And she's like, what are these things? And I was like, uh, they're art supplies, I swear. Um, so I am taking another small brush. Again, this, I think I got this. I got it because I like the handles. They have glitter in them. I got like a pack of eight of these for a few bucks. Um, don't You don't have to spend a million dollars. Okay, so I'm taking off the lid here. Oh, and there's actually enough paint in the lid for me. So I'm going to just touch some paint here and just run some pink into the ears. Oh my God, it's so cute. How are yours coming out? Are you painting along? You're just watching? Are you super cute? Put post pictures of what you're doing. I want to see. I want to see. Um, all right, I'm going to get up close here. So I am going to add a little pink. Can you see? Come closer. Sorry, Instagram. Um, come so a little pink in the nose and some pink in the ears. And I like little pink cheeks. Whoop. Sound effects. Boop. And then your finger is great for it kind of just softening that up just like you would do on your face right <laughs> do you do this i like a lot of blush when i'm wearing blush i like too much blush and then i use my hands to kind of move it around and that's why i walk around looking crazy so again this pink is here so i'm going to add a little pink to the clouds because we want to move that around um i'm going to add a little pink so we have little pink flowers all right, we've got a half an hour left. How are we doing out there? How's it going? How does this feel versus being um, sitting in a room with me? Is this all right? Has everyone got pants on? You don't have to have pants on today. This is, this is a new day, painting without pants. Um, oh my gosh, it's coming out so cute. So again, you wanna get some distance. So I see some wacky spots that I would like to be a little less wacky. I'm going to use a little bit darker green. So I'm not going to pull out another green. I am going to take one of my brushes. First, I'm going to cap my pink. Make sure to cap your stuff so that you can keep using your stuff. Um, I am going to take one of my brushes here, this one. I'm going to wipe off onto my palette, then wipe onto my Viva, whatever you've got. Or use your pants if those are your painting pants. If you're little kids, ask your parents before you paint on your pants, please. I don't want to get those letters or emails. Okay, so I'm taking 
Uh, my live video ended. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take um, this. Can you see this? I'm going to take this green. I'm going to just slightly touch into my blue. And then I'm going to put that into my green. And that's going to give me a darker green. Listen, every time you add colors to other colors, they're going to become a little bit more muddy. So if you're going for super bright, intense colors, um, don't keep mixing down your paint. It's fine for what I'm doing right here, but ju it just art tip number 78. Um, every time you're, you touch the paint, it basically gets a little duller. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm using that new green that I've created just to add some more interest down here. Can you see what I'm doing? And can you see just right? Can you see just that little white glow that's on the side of the bunny? Because we had uh, that those layers, that wouldn't have happened if we had just painted this yellow. Because we did some negative shape painting, we painted around the shape that we were creating, um, we get this little glow and it's just interesting and lovely. And it, the je ne sais quoi of, uh, why is that painting so cool? Because you're doing these little, little things. All right, looking good, dab, dab, dab. That cloud definitely needs some work. Um, but, uh, and how I'm going to do that, so just because I'm seeing it and I want to react to it, uh, just gonna, just adding some more white to this cloud, dab, 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 because it's getting a little, it was getting a little, uh, smiths on me, a little, a little emo morose. This is a happy painting, a happy little cloud. Needs to be a little bit lighter than that. Okay. Dab, dab, dab. All right. So now I'm going to add some, uh, some flowers around my bunny. I already started with that pink and I'm going to treat it just like everything else. It's going to have a, a dark side, a light side and some middle shade. So, um, that's why I should have put pink out on my calendar, on my palette. Uh, okay, so now I will put some pink out on my palette. Oh my gosh, it's looking so cute. If I do say so myself. All right, so which brush? Which brush should I use? I'm a little disorganized because this isn't normally how I paint, but we're going to be all right. We're going to get through this. All right. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so I'm gonna use this brush here. Uh, and it, because of that shape, it's gonna do basically all the work for me. You see what I'm doing? Everything's good? Okay, so I'm gonna very scientifically put flowers in and around the bunny. See how scientifically I'm deciding on where they go? Perfect. Um, now I'm gonna darken this pink up a little um, with the slightest little bit of that, that medium blue we were using before, um, going to create kind of a purpley tinge, a very purpley tinge, but it's going to darken that pink up. And because the dark side has been here, hmm, not quite dark enough. Let's see what I can do. So I'm just adding kind of a darker hue there. Not dark enough. What's everybody going to have for supper tonight? Is it popcorn? <gasps> Popcorn's like one of my favorite suppers. <laughs> uh, we had pasta for lunch. So, I don't know. Maybe big salads. Bunsy and I like big salads. Maybe we'll have big salads. All right, so I've got some darker stuff going on. I'm gonna wipe down again. Go to my, go to my Viva. Wipe that down again. I'm gonna pick up some of the white. And while this is still wet, I'm gonna add just some dots of white onto these flowers. 
you know? And so in our finished piece here, you can see it's got like three shades in there, right? And I like they're sort of out of focus a little bit. That's, that's cool to me. All right, I'm gonna go in and give the flowers some, some stalks, something that they're actually sitting on and they're just not floating. So I've got my smaller brush here uh, and a light touch. Don't worry about it being too accurate. I'm just thinking about where would these stalks be? These stems, nice stems. This was the 50s. You can say nice stems means that a lady had nice legs, nice stems. I like that, it's kind of funny. So right outside my new studio here, I've got rose bushes. I don't know what kind of roses they're gonna be, um, but I am excited. So anybody out there who's good with flowers, I always say I have a green heart more than a green thumb. If you want to send me any advice about what I should be doing with these rose bushes or not doing, or just leave them alone, Philomena, don't touch them. Um, I'm excited. Oh my gosh. So cute. So cute. Oh, and there's a little heart there. Mary Rose, are you watching? I put her a little heart in there. I'm going to say it's for you. Okay. Mary Rose is an amazing painter and she's teaching classes too. Um, and she always has beautiful hearts in her artwork and I love it. Her whole family is so wonderful and talented. I just like that, that gang so much. And, um, I trick them into hanging out with me sometimes by like having them come to paint classes and stuff. Um, all right. Oh my gosh, it's cute. Um, okay. So stepping back, I definitely can see some places that need a little more love. But for, I think we're going to start wrapping up here. I could add a little white onto the nose, just a little highlight there. Sound effects, everyone. Boop. Oh, I almost forgot. This is important. Duh. Please, please, please add a little highlight to the eyes. It just makes them more alive. And see, those aren't pupils that I'm trying to do there. They're just little highlights. So... Um, I will grab my smallest brush. This time I will wash it because I want that white to really um, pop. Uh, okay. Put these other brushes down. And so this is, I guess I'm, this is the part I'm going to be careful. I wasn't careful for very much of this, right? So this, I'm actually going to take my glasses off and get up close and just give myself so that the little boop. Sound effect, boop. Oh my gosh, okay, so just that little highlight. If the eye was larger, I would add some like semicircle, half circles. Um, and on this one, you see I added a little dark under his eyes just to make it indented, um, just to make it a little indented. So I'm gonna use that same brush and just on whatever the darker side is, just add a little, these, just these little touches, really, really um, give you some more depth and definition. You could even do that like right under the, his snout, right under, make it look like, so it's these little touches, which give you more depth, Okay, so I'm gonna start wrapping up here. Are there any questions that y'all have that I can uh, answer right now? Has anyone noticed what I've forgotten? I didn't sign it, okay? So for me, I usually, on small pieces like this, I do a big F for Philomena, and then I attach that with a little J for Jack. And then on larger pieces, I will, uh, oh, I forgot two things. Um, on larger pieces, I'll sign my name. Um, please sign your artwork all the time, every time. Oh, sign your artwork. If you don't like it, sign it. If you love it, sign it. Um, be proud that you did this, okay? 
there are a hundred things you could have been doing and you decided to make art and that's beautiful. Um, so sign your artwork, be, be proud. Okay, what did I forget? I forgot the bunny tail. So using this highly specialized tool, I've got 10 of them. Um, there he is, right? Cute, cute, cute. Um, so again, uh, I thank you for being here. I want you to know that if you're able to wash your brushes with Murphy's oil soap, I like it a lot. I don't love it for anything else. I tried cleaning a dresser. I did not like it. Um, but Murphy's oil soap to clean your brushes. And if you want to put sort of a, a sheen on this or a protectant, it's acrylic paint. It's really not going to go anywhere. But um, if you want to put a, a varnish layer on it, I really like this polycrylic. And it's the water-based one you want, this, this tealy kind of color. This is not an art store supply. This is like those Value Home Center. I love Value Home Center. Those people rock. Um, you can find this at Value Home Center or the big box stores. Uh, it comes in, this one is clear gloss, and it comes in two or three other varieties. But you definitely need the one that's water-based. Um, two or three co co coats of that with a very clean brush. If you have paint on your brush and then you put it in here and then you put it on your painting, you're putting more paint on your painting and you may not want to do that. Um, so make sure I keep brushes that are just for this um, and you have to put this in water right away because that will harden on your brush and do what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to harden things and protect things. It's going to protect your brushes. Um, so I like this very much. It comes in smaller cans. It comes in larger cans. Do not shake it. If you shake it, you're going to get air bubbles. And when you get air bubbles, or air bubbles end up in your painting and you get a very uh, irregular covering. Okay. You're supposed to wait 72 hours for your acrylic paint to cure before you do that. I'm often impatient and don't do that, but that's what you're supposed to do. If you would like more classes like this, let me know. I would love to produce more of these classes. And in fact, I am working on being able to produce these on a fancy schmancy platform where you can download things and go week to week and learn new things. Um, there's going to be more information on my Patreon page. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com. And then just look for me, Philomena Jack or Philomena Jack Studio. Um, thank you so much. Go and find Kimberly's class and all the other classes that the library is going to be producing. Thank you to our library staff who are still working, still dealing with emails from people like me. Um, Marshall and Erica, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm sending you lots of love and send me your emails, philomenajackstudio.com. I'd love to hear from you and see how you're doing. And I can't wait to see you in 3D in a class, either here at my studio in Elmira or somewhere around the Finger Lakes or maybe at a big fancy museum somewhere. Maybe Bunzi is coming to Corning. I think he is. Wait till you find out what's going on with that, with, uh, with the Rockwell. Oh my gosh, so excited. Um, okay, sending you love. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye.